Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm really excited to be here because you all are going to help me with something. I need to put up my new collage wall in my new apartment, which hello, I just moved. It's been a while. I need to uh, create something here and I wanted to show you how I do it. I've been doing a variation of a collage wall in every place that I've lived uh, since freshman year, about five years, and I don't know how many apartments since then. So I'm going to show you the supplies that you need and preface this in terms of artwork and things you decide to put up. It's very much a collection of items and it continues to grow and change. The main thing is you're going to start out with your building blocks. We kind of have a big space here on this wall you're going to see. So what you really need is to help you structure, you're going to have some bigger pieces of artwork. For example, I have a few framed 8 by 10, 8.5 by 11 pieces of artwork. This one's by my sister-in-law. This one was done by my friend Holly. I bought off her Etsy shop. Uh, I will tag as much as I can below. So I have these to help me um, anchor the pieces. I love calendars. I always have to have a couple up in my apartment. Um, thumbs up if any of you read The Amazing Days of Abby Hayes uh, when you were younger because she had a calendar collection. That inspired me. So I have this rifle paper one and it's a good decent size so this will help anchor. This piece, Enjoy the Ride, uh, my best friend gave this to me uh, I think when I left for college. I'm not going to talk forever about all these pieces but this one was actually from this book uh, the indie rock poster book back in the day and this is from bright eyes um basically it talks about um having bipolar it talks about how you need to enjoy the ride um the maze or the roller coaster so i like that it's you know kind of vague looking at it but to me it has a deeper meaning so that is a kind of a bigger piece as well i have this norman rockwell i can't even remember where i got this print I always have this one up, that kind of takes a little bit of space. And then just a bunch more 8x10s, 8 by 11s I don't know what they are. Uh, Mari Andrew. The point is you have big, medium, and small things that you're going to hang up. So experiment with things beyond paper displays. This one I usually hang up in a smaller type of vignette situation, but it's just a little banner that I think is cute. You can also have some other objects, like I have this clock I got from Ikea for like $2. And I have some smaller canvases and pieces of artwork. The bulk of the building pieces of a collage wall for me are postcards and a few pictures. So when I moved, I put the bulk of them in this glossier case. So just for reference, this is what we have to work with. We got options, people. We got photos. Uh, film strips, we have mostly postcards from traveling, a couple family pictures, and this is, is I think the most versatile part of the collage wall because when you get new stuff, you visit a new place, you can just swap out something older. You know, each place I move, I'll just store the things that I'm, I'm not using on the current wall and then they come up in the next round. So we got this, this is what we're working with here, and of course we got some little baby pictures. Now that you've gathered your building blocks, things that I use to help stick up, obviously, command strips. These are for the bigger, bulkier um, photo frames and things like that. The majority of it, the past one, I put it up with washi tape. The three washi tapes that I use in my past apartment, I'll end corporate use a little bit, but they kind of left residue when I moved. I picked up this rose gold scotch washi tape, I want to incorporate more of that type of tone, even though looking around my apartment, it's mostly gold accents, but that's okay. We're going to be quirky. And then I, from trying out these uh, Scotch removable mounting squares, and there's quite a few in here that will just help keep things from ripping, because as you kind of take things off, I have some pieces that have old tape on them, because if I move that tape, then the top of the card is going to come off. And then also push pins. Now, the reason why I'm focusing on these other uh, tapes and things is because these walls are actually painted over wood paneling. This is an old house. 
So I, these push pins are not gonna go through, I'm gonna guess, but I, in places where I feel more comfortable about leaving marks, um, as in management will get mad, push pins are the way to go. Okay, so that's everything. Now we are gonna get building. That is not safe. We're gonna spread out our supplies. Just keep breathing and breathing and breathing. What's really nice is this paneling here. It actually helps me give you straight lines, which I usually don't worry about too much. Now you can cut your washi tape if you want crisp edges, but I don't really care most of the time. So it's all about scale. Now here's another trick for you. I got this box of command. They have these large sizes. I cut them in half to make them go farther. Usually I'm watching something while I'm doing this, so. Just keep breathing, breathing, breathing. Now you see here, this is a piece that has like a lot of faces. So is this one, so we're gonna spread them out. Just keep breathing, breathing, all you have to do, keep on breathing. All right, we're getting anchor pieces up. Okay, say you're starting a collage wall from scratch and you don't already have a bunch of stuff at the ready, like I do. I just say start with what you have. You have to have something. Postcards people have sent. Start by printing off some pictures. This piece that I'm putting up right now was actually a Christmas gift from my niece. And I'm obsessed with it. I don't want to start crying right now. Uh, it's both of us. So, you're welcome. I want to quickly mention spacing. So, I leave about an inch to a half an inch between, just so there's some breathing room. And I'm going to be annoying and say, you know, put my ass. How do you just do this? Maybe you won't ask that, but you might. And I think you, I think I do have an artistic eye when it comes to these things. So that plays a part in terms of having how you know how I can balance pieces. But, but if you start with the building blocks, you can figure it out. And the main thing is just to have a display of all the things that you like. So I'm switching up my washi tape technique here, double corner. Now I like this because it's a graphic black and white. And I have a few of those and those help give it some white space. But we gotta kind of switch up the shapes here. That's why I'm added this. I have a picture frame of a photo. I don't know what else would be in there. <laughs> now I can actually, you know, switch out the picture that is in this frame. But I won't because um, it's Disneyland and it's my mom and my sister's so We like this. Do I want it in the center? Yeah. Why not? So part of it is the first place that I see, I'll stick something there. I'll have a couple pieces that I kind of want to feature by themselves throughout my apartment. This might be one of them. So I'm going to actually save a couple things and put them aside. Here's my little Satan. And it's a good thing. I'll link, if I find a link to this piece, I will. Um, it says, this is all um, a bunch of little lies that Satan says. He's a little drawing. Like, uh, it will never work out, born to lose, discouraging things that this uh, uh, lying, negative, hateful creep. Not today, Satan. Not today. And I have the angel version, actually, behind the camera. So then we go into, we got a big postcard. So I like to offset things. I don't want things in a straight line. Like if I were to put this postcard right here. I like to offset it a little bit and I might fit something small in there. Just so the lines 
aren't lining up straight among the pieces. I would put this here, but these bows are too similar to the lines in here, so I'm going to switch it up. And then this will tie in the pieces across. Building blocks are looking good. Now, talking about dimensions, I actually have a pretty even wall here. I got two doors. It's a little bit offset from this camera is. Uh, I'm going to try to evenly spread, and I like to go about hip width high to about as high as I can reach. And it, I think that creates a nice look. All right, people, here's the fun part postcards. Talking about where I get my postcards, uh, traveling, obviously. I look gift shops. I, I take them as my souvenirs and I take my time in finding some that are pretty. Like I picked up this one here, it was a Columbus. Now the postcards are vertical, they're horizontal. That's another way to play up with the sheet. I gotta jump in here real quick. This is my newest piece, Joining the Club. This is by Sally Nixon, my very favorite illustrator. I got this off our Etsy shop and I need to get a frame for it, but for now it's sticking out of place in the middle. Oh dear, the middle is the zone. Nothing wrong with adding a little bit of narrative. I have this wooden postcard that has a Virginia Woolf quote. And I was looking for a vertical one and I found my Virginia Woolf one. So she's definitely, that's the place for her. So this section right here is finished. Then we just keep working our way outward. Mine is to be intuitive, but you can definitely stop and rearrange what you need to. Filling in the spaces. Yes, ma'am. <gasps> it's looking really cute. It's looking really good. Now, Mr. Darcy, he's on every wall. So that can't change just thinking about the fun thing about calendars is that it switches up your wall every month so the key here is like any design situation take color from one part of a room and add it somewhere else so we're tying in this corner here with the yellows now it's almost just a little too much for the yellows i need something black and white right here to help break it up sometimes you can't find a place Right way. <laughs> it's also helpful to add photos in because it adds a change of texture. It's also important to me to feature a few pieces of religious art, things that are really meaningful to me. So that's another place to start as well. Now I get to this point, I'm just trying to squeeze in the pieces that I know I want on just so they don't. <laughs> Get overlooked. Another way to add cohesion is to have a couple pieces by the same artist. So, for example, I have a Norman Rockwell print and I have a little postcard. So, I actually, have a couple postcards of his, and that helps add another layer of cohesion. So, I have some more space, so I'm realizing I need a couple bigger pieces just so then the postcards don't look so scattered just by themselves. We're getting so close. Going to the edge, people. The edge of glory. Whew. Whew. All right, that was so fake. <laughs> there we have it, the finished wall. There's a couple tweaks that I'm gonna make, a couple kind of odd gaps. There's my wall, so my final tips for you is to first you need to gather things that you love and I was thinking about this, especially if you love a fandom of any type, if you have those type of posters or any little things, if you save ticket stubs. You don't, you don't want to put like junk up on your walls, but you can have something nice. Uh, you want to go with, again, the hierarchy. Put big, purse, put big things up on the wall, the medium size, and then small size and even smaller to fill in the gaps. You can mix up what you use, washi tape, 3M strips, other types of things to stick on, uh, push pins, and you can use that to, you know, switch up your color palette as well, especially with washi tape. I'm tired. Thanks for joining me today and helping me get my wall up. Um, you didn't do anything, but the motivation for me to make this, for 
rewatch, uh, help me put it up, and I actually put it up quicker. So now I'm going to turn on my AC unit again, and I'll see you next time. Bye!